But let me um, play this clip real quick. China would be even a bigger nightmare for the West because you know, look at China as a standing as a socialist country, as a country that, that offers so much uh, aid to age, other countries in Asia, Africa, Latin America. You know, it's an entirely different ball game. And, you know, if the United States tries to use Taiwan as a pawn against China, their defeat on that issue, I'm not talking militarily at this time, but politically, will be much more resounding than their impending defeat of the using Ukraine as a pawn against Russia. And we see that because, like, this is not to take any way, anything away from um, Russia, but the Chinese um financial standing it, it is the largest uh holders of, of of currency reserves it's the largest investor in the world it has the largest gold reserves um in the world and it is the largest trade partner to practically the entire world so i'm trying to understand what senator what congressman what leader think that it is a smart idea to sanction the very nation that produces the combat boots, the fatigues, the flags, the lapels, uh, everything that that goes into the military, the 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 um, motherboards, the the chips for the missiles, everything. I mean, isn't that insanity? That's lunacy, isn't it? Well, 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 well uh, Rashid, you have to remember most are our politicians like Mitch McConnell, uh, Feinstein, Biden. <laughs> These guys are boring the last, you know, in the middle, they're this in the middle of the last century. You know, their best time was like back in 1960s. That, that, that was finally their peak. 1960s, 1970s. That's a world they remember. They remember like the peak of American power. Uh, uh, but they they right now they're half the time they don't know where they are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't expect them to realize the reality of 2023, uh, because I, I. I don't think. I. I honestly don't think they. They understand the situation United States in right now. You know, vis-a-vis -vis China, because in their mind, you know, China was still probably this. You know, isolated uh, a country. You know, back in the in the Cold War. This is why a lot of them think they can wage Cold War 2.0 and still win, uh, which is crazy. But I mean, like, uh, if anything, you know, waging Cold War 2.0, they will just be isolating United States, and then they will force their European allies to go along with the isolation, and th th that will just end up strangling their own economy. So, um, yeah, I, I, I it's uh. And then you, you you talk about like United States defunding education. Um, you would think you would think that this would not affect the most elite segment of the population, right? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> because I know where you're going. <laughs> because right now it looks like the dumbing dumb of America is all across the board. It it, it, it applies to to everyone, and, mm -hmm. and you, you, if you just look at. Take a look and listen to your congressman. Listen to your politicians. You will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> these people are dumb. I mean, yeah. okay, these people are very smart when it comes to line up their own pocket, when it comes to corruption, when it comes to grip. But it comes to every everything else, they're just dumb. And, and, and you, you know, like you cannot run an empire on these very limited human resources. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I just, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jenny BN says again, she's talking about uh, Chinese businesses in the U.S. and Chinese the Chinese own a lot of U.S. Uh, land in the U.S. But also, uh, Jenny, and I'm going to say this, then I'll let Carl chime in because this I don't know who it was meant for. But you have to understand, most U.S. corporations are invested in China also. So yeah. what's good for the goose can be good for the gander also. Uh, go ahead, Carl. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the U.S. corporations they don't want, they don't want a cold war. They 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 are making money hand over fist. Um, you know, Apple, uh, they, they're China is not only where ninety percent of the iPhone is made, but China is also a large market. 
Uh, actually, Apple ben- benefited. Well, Apple, okay, well, maybe Apple is a bad example because Apple actually benefited from U.S. sanction on Huawei. Because mm-hmm. when U.S. sanction on Huawei, mm-hmm. Apple uh, market share went up in China because now, now like because of Huawei's 5G phone almost got killed. So a lot of the, chi- chi- the Chinese uh, consumers ended up switching to Apple. But now that that's, that's changed, now Huawei is coming up with their own chip, with their own phone. Um, people are now also boosted by patriotism because they see what the U- United States is doing to Huawei. They're, now they're buying, they, they'd rather buy Huawei than Apple. So, um, but, but, but most of the, most of the U.S. companies, you know, this is why Elon Musk is in travel to sh- China all the time, you know, because not only because he has a Shanghai Gigafactory, but also China is a big market. It's a big market for them. GM, you, GM make more cars in China than they make in the United States. The, the, the market, like I remember in 2008, uh, during the financial crisis, I traveled to China um, and uh, one of my dad's friend's uh, daughter was working in GM China. And she was like, yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing in the GM in U.S., man. Like, we are the one making money. <laughs> bankrupt. I don't, know, I don't know why they're losing money in, in, in America, but mm-hmm. we're, we're making money hand over fist here in China. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's also starting to change because when Chinese domestic brand is now starting to be competitive but for a long time you know the, the China is a place for the for the US multinationals to make money um, they, they're, they're still opening Starbucks KFC mm-hmm. to China KFC is every corner and uh, and I tell you what the Chinese KFC tastes better than KFC. <laughs> <laughs> this is just sad. Like it's not just China. I I went to I I lived in Bali, you know, Bali, Indonesia. McDonald's and Burger King taste better in Bali than the United States. <laughs> Coca Cola tastes better in, in, outside of the United States because they actually use real sugar. They use, use mm-hmm. cane, cane sugar than the high food toast syrup corn syrup crap that we get mm-hmm. over here like my 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 my, my wife when, when she when i brought her here and she wanted to taste the uh, american coca-cola i'm like no man, man that's a bad idea <laughs> you not like it and she's like no i just want to try and so we, when we went to the movie theater i got her her a huge uh the, the, the jumbo size and it's just like oh my god what is this crap how do you guys do this <laughs> yeah every everything is is it's like this with me. Let me just say it like this. I continue to tell everybody that all of these things, minute as they may be, are signs of a declining empire. Uh, this, there are signs of a declining republic and culture. Remember when people took pride in what they had, what they owned, what they built, what they made. Now it's all about profit. It's all about divide and conquer. It's all about let me see how I can get over on the next man or woman. And I'll do any and everything to do that. And look where it has gotten the Republic of America. Look where it's gotten the Western world. It may have benefited for a little bit and it may have benefited the, the top tier, but now the the ramifications and the repercussions of those greedy, racist, fascist policies are now destroying the very fabric of, of America and the Western world. What say you on that matter? Oh, definitely. I, I actually interview uh, Peter Turchin, one of the social scientists who has been studying the, the, the collapse of societies from, from the antiquity to the present. And uh, according, to his, according to his prediction model, uh, you know, United States is entering what he calls a revolutionary phase in the 2020s you know we are in this decade of 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 tor- of ferment right now like like we, we actually start to see that with like trump presidency mm-hmm. and now we're just yeah. it's just the cycle is just continuing i mean look, look at look look at biden you know he he's he, he, he's not quite there, and and look at the next ele- the coming election. You know, we're getting we're getting Biden versus Trump again. <laughs> you know, the people talk about how U.S. is a great democracy. This is a choice we have, folks. You either get Biden or you either get Trump. <laughs> you know, two, two terms in a row. This is all you can you, all you're getting. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Holly says that Russia was prepared, China will be ready. I, I, I agree. I definitely. I mean, China has been preparing for this for a long, long time. And I believe that the the leaders of the Western world, they they are so out of touch and out of tune with reality and so out of touch with the average person that they actually believe the garbage that they peddle to everybody. They really believe that stuff because, you know, believe a person when they show you who they are. Don't believe them how you think that they are. Believe them as they show you who they are. If someone is constantly doing something over and over again, as I as I posed on one of my questions on my one of my shows, I said, if this person went from this neighborhood to that neighborhood to that neighborhood to that neighborhood, and every time they were in that neighborhood, they either caused a fight or they were raping or robbing, that's who that person is, right? Well, look at the policy initiatives. From administration to administration, it doesn't matter who's the president. Uh, the system itself is corrupt, racist, fascist, and will do any and everything to maintain its power. And those who come, uh, who claim to want to come to power to change it, I ask this question. Do they change the system or does the ch system change them? Because when we look at it, we see the same policies. Look, look. Uh, what was implemented by Obama, um, and how he I voted for him. I voted for him <laughs> in 2008. I thought I thought he was a real deal. I believe I in the change. And after <laughs> after that, I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this this crap. Like everybody, every politician is the same. You know, it doesn't matter. Every one of them. Every one of them. And Obama. And let me tell you, a lot of people don't like to hear this, but I got to tell. He used his color, um, to get to office and exploit black brown red yellow and poor whites that's what he did the, the people that are pulling the strings behind the scene knew that they uh the system was close to imploding so they wanted to give a a fresh look and some semblance of hope so that you can still believe in the system and look from the policies that he enacted to the policies that were enacted after him all the way up to right now and show me where they have deviated much and they haven't so we're looking. I'm telling you, these Obama, every last one of them believe this mess. Obama <laughs> is a black face of the white establishment in America. I mean, oh. <laughs> he, he, he did. I, I, I have to give it to him. He pulled it off. He pulled it <laughs> off, and he he come. He fooled a lot of people. You know, including myself, myself included. But like uh, after Obama, what I realized is. It's all a sham. Right? It's all, it's all shame. a sham. It's like I don't, I don't believe anything what every mm -hmm. uh, any of these politicians say anymore. It's yeah. It's, it's all nothing ever changes. The problem mm -hmm. is always promise change, but when they come to power, every it's it's more of the same, you know. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's uh it, this is this is the truth of America. You know they 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 they, they say it's a it's a democracy. It's it's freedom. No, it's a you have freedom to choose between Obama or uh, to, to, you have the freedom to choose between Biden or Trump. That is your freedom. <laughs> that's, a, that's all the freedom you're getting. <laughs> and, and the system will not even even if you think that Trump is a lot different, the system will only allow him to go so far out of it before they reel him back in. What, what I'm saying to you is that. The system and those dark powers, as Putin said, Putin said it real nice, and I'm going to paraphrase it, and I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but he said, um, each president that comes to power, they come with all of these ideas, and they come with all of these promises until they get elected, and these men in black suit come in and tell them what you can and can't do, and, and that's pretty much, that's the sum of it, that sums up the entire a uh, U.S. political system. It is a farce. And listen, as the economy deteriorates more, and as America's military power deteriorates more, and as her her uh, political in, and and economic influence deteriorate globally, you're going to see a system exposed because it's going to start eating at itself. It's already doing that. Look what happened um, on January 6 with this. Look look what's happening now across America. There there's a uh, there's a racial divide, a cultural divide, an economic divide. All of that stuff is is growing exponentially because the system can no longer um, 
I, I call it Walt Disney. You, you know, Walt Disney is this imaginary makeup made up thing. And the system can, can only focus on so many things. And so they can't focus on this wonderful uh, Walt Disney world of America's the greatest America's the richest. We are unified. All of that is falling apart at the seams because the system is being taxed on every level and it is falling apart. What say you on that? No, I, I 100% <laughs> agreement. I mean, like right now it's a, uh... Uh, it's it's sad because a lot of the U.S. Pub, public is kind of raised with U.S. number one as almost mm -hmm. built in as their part of the identity. That's why they get very defensive when you tell them U.S. is not number one anymore. <laughs> They're always trying to say, no, 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 like China is going to collapse anytime. And this is why like people like Peter Zeehan has a huge following because he tells them what they want to believe. He mm -hmm. sells the op copium, you know, copium and hopium. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, but, but you know, good for him. You know, he, he's getting a good grip going. He, he recognized what, what makes money. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't begrudge a man of his hustle. But, but, but the, 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 the whole system is not, is not well. It's, is, is not well. We, we all know it. We live in it. Or, you know, we, we live in it long enough to figure out. It's a scam. It's a sham, and and I'm just I just can't wait. I just can't wait for the whole edifice to to come down <laughs> <laughs> to, to collapse. And it's gonna be it's gonna be something. Uh, I was talking to uh, Gregory Manorino. He's an investor, yeah, and um, he has his own podcast, and I think he has two hundred or three hundred thousand subscribers. He was an um, I think a captain in the U.S. Navy, if I'm not mistaken, either a lieutenant or a captain, and um, he does this investing and he he's been warning people he said when this thing collapses it will cause the loss of life on a biblical scale he said because this will be more deadly than a nuclear exchange because so many people are wrapped up in this idea of western and us supremacy and when the dollar and the euro and the pound is no longer that currency and they can't buy or they can't go to that store they can't go down and and hunger sets in. It's one thing for hunger to set in on you. It's another thing for hunger to set in on your children. And you have no way to get this. It's going to start people robbing and killing and, and all of this stuff. And the government is going to be so factionalized and so so focused on trying to uh, put up a facade that everything will be all right. That we, we may be even looking at Mad Max type dealings here in America because um, there will be there will be war. I'm telling you. And he was talking about this and I was, it's a sobering and sobering um, picture that most Americans and most Western people refuse to acknowledge. It's not that they never heard it before. It's that they believe that it is unreal. I was talking to um, a, a family friend one day and I was pointing out to him, this was a few years ago. And if, if my mom is watching, she knows, hey, Ma, I love you. But um, um, I was we were all standing out in her yard and we were talking and laughing. And and so I was telling the person, I said, listen, you better prepare yourself for the for the days when it'll be lean because we're heading we're, we're heading down a path of total implosion. I said America won't be the number one. She won't have the privilege that she used to enjoy. And this will cause revolution. And I said when the dollar collapse this will change everything because all most people know is dollar supremacy. And immediately I was cut off. He said, what do you mean the dollar collapse? The dollar will never collapse. America, we're too strong for this. This is what the guy told me. I mean, he was in my face telling me they get offended from when you tell them something outside of their comfort zone. And, and, and it, and you're trying to warn them of an impending um, collapse or, or an impending fire that's right over the, the cliff here that is headed toward your home. But they can't see the forest for the trees because they've been so indoctrinated to America must lead, America exceptionalism, America's first. Why can't there be an equal playing field? Why, how come America can't be one amongst equals? Why does she have to always impose her will, her way, her policies, her laws, her extraterritorial laws, I might add? If the people are indoctrinated. I believe they are all drunk off of Amer American imperialism. What, what say you on the matter? I, I think America is stuck in the denial phase of the five-step grieving process. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> <defining> <laughs> empire. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think in the in the deep of their heart, they actually know it's true. Yeah. The, 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 this, yeah. this whole thing is going down. The U.S. is on the declining path, but they refuse to believe it because mm -hmm. to to believe it will kind of shake the foundation of what they have believed in all their life and that's mm -hmm. they can't have that it's it's almost like a religion right america yeah. number one is almost a religion if you attack somebody's religion you attack somebody's identity they get like offended they get defensive so like mm -hmm. oh whoa 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 you know like no 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 the earth is flat you know like <laughs> you can't you can't <laughs> tell me otherwise and, <laughs> but <laughs> well, well, well Diane says, "Exciting time to be alive." Yeah, we're we're definitely living the interesting times right now, Diane. And, and, uh, and we'll, what, what we this were is just why, talking about? This, go ahead, go ahead. This is why I am choosing to decamp and move into Indonesia. You know, I'm I'm only going to be here for a couple months. So I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here to visit my folks. You know, making sure they're okay. But after two months. After I do my filial duties to my parents, I'm out of here. I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> um, Putin's shirt, he was talking about the quote, I guess, that we were talking about with him. And this is what he said. That's what Putin just said at an EF, EF presser. He said it doesn't matter who wins the U.S. elections. The same agenda will continue. See, we're not lying. We're telling you the truth. There's proof of it right there. Yeah. So, Carl, I'm, I mean... We know that there will be hell to pay for a dollar collapse. We know that there's going to be hell to pay for the economic collapse, but a lot of people don't know that Britain or the UK's uh, financial uh, wherewithal is tied right to the United States. The pound and the dollar are tied together. That's why you have the London gold exchange tied with the New York stock exchange and gold exchange. That's, the, that's why when you see one at war, you see the other at war. So. With, with the UK being a smaller uh, version of the United States, what do you think will be going on when that dollar finally collapses? Because we know that uh, the UK is not a military power globally anymore. What do you think the ramifications of the dollar collapse and America's position uh, being uh, broken globally, what do you think that would uh, do to the UK? Well, actually, I think all those vassal states of United States empire will suffer first. I mean, we can't. We see Europe. Europe is in pain right now. They're getting cut off on the the cheap Russian gas, and they're being pressured by U U.S. to decouple from China. So all the German industrialists, they are moving their factories to United States, where at least they can get cheap in energy. And and so so U.S. is essentially cannibalizing its allies in, in, in order to sustain itself and and so you europe is gonna gonna suffer first but at the same time when when the shit hits a fan europe always have an option to switch to switch <laughs> <price>. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's just the truth i mean like the the, the the vassal states will stick with you know the mafia boss when uh when he's a mafia boss when the, when the mafia down is is like like down on his luck luck nobody's gonna stick around you know like there's no loyalty i mean like like why what you know us is holding the system together by coercive force you know once mm -hmm. that coercive force is not being funded anymore, you know, because the U.S. Stop, 